Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jimmy Wallington speaking for the Screen Director's Playhouse. Last Thursday, we presented a comedy entitled My Favorite Wife. And it proved to be such a comedy of such great proportions that we ran out of time. So we we're unable to express our thanks where thanks were really due. May we do so now. To the producers of My Favorite Wife... RKO Radio Pictures, distributors of the Howard Hughes production Vendetta, starring Faith Demerg and introducing George Dolenz, and to Miss Irene Dunn, who soon will be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, Mudlark. And now, Screen Director's Playhouse, stars Barbara Stanwyck, Stephen McNally, production Lady Gambles, director Michael Gordon. <laughs> This is the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the only cigarette that combines mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste, the cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope, RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by your local Ford dealer who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford, the car that's built for the years ahead. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present a study in dramatic conflicts. Our play, for the first time on the air is Lady Gambles, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Stephen McNally. But first, we invite you to hear from Bob Hope on his recent visit to Hawaii. Well, here we are on the island of Oahu. We had a very smooth trip over. At first, we flew at an altitude that didn't bother me. We had to go up higher because the salt water was ruining the tires. <laughs> just, just out of San Francisco, we developed a little motor trouble, and the pilot yelled, throw everything we don't eat overboard. A Navy cruiser picked me up about two hours later. <laughs> Let's sell Chesterfield. You know, the real test for mildness in a cigarette is as old as tobacco itself. Just open a pack of Chesterfields and smell that milder tobacco aroma. Then light up a Chesterfield and prove what every tobacco man knows. Tobaccos that smell milder, smoke milder. So always buy them. Chesterfield, my cigarette. Chesterfield, Chesterfield, always wins first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell. Then you smoke them. Don't forget to give Crosby for Christmas. I mean the Chesterfield Christmas carton with Bing as Papa Santa Claus. Now, here is the first act of Lady Gamble, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Stephen McNally in their original roles of Joan and Corrigan. Kiss him for me, baby. Kiss him for me, Joanie. Give him to me, Frenchie. Give me the dice. Put him in my hand and let me love him. Oh, sweet papa, come you seven. Hey, hold it, sister. You're palming a pair of loaded dice. Let go of me. Come on, Maxie. Kick a brain in. No. Kick a brain in. No! <laughs> Clinical report, Dr. Rojak. Joan Booth, age 28. Admitted to Chicago Hospital December 14th, 3 a.m. Found brutally and viciously beaten on rat-infested pier. Unconscious on arrival. Married to David Booth, newspaper man. Separated for past year. Sister, Ruth Phillips. Patient known to police. Personal remarks. Why does a woman like Joan Booth, who obviously was once very beautiful with decent environment, wind up with the lowest type of human garbage? A Skid Row character. What was the cause? The rhyme, the reason? Husband? Sister? Who knows? Who can tell what goes on in a sick mind? Petty thieves, hoodlums, wharf rats... Oh, come, you beautiful seven. It's exciting, it's exciting. $1,100. I gotta have $1,100. 
The dice are loaded. What am I doing? What is this all about? Kick up brains then, Maxie. Kick up brains. No, leave me alone. Leave me alone. David. David, help. David. Ruth. Ruth, darling. David asked me to marry him. Oh, you're selfish. You've always been selfish. You only think of yourself. Davy, after we're married, I want Ruth to live with us, okay? Oh, you're sweet. Davy, could Ruth come along with us to Las Vegas when you do the series on Boulder Dam? Oh, have a heart, Joni. Not on our honeymoon. Seventeen black. Isn't the Pelican Hotel fun, Davy? <laughs> Go on, and put another ten-cent chip on the black. No, I'll skip this one. Uh, David, darling, at 7.30 now in Chicago. Don't you think maybe we ought to call Ruth? Why? You sent her a wire the moment we arrived, didn't you? But this is the first time we left her alone, and after all, living together wasn't her idea. Oh, wasn't it? Look, darling, I insist that you don't call her. Promise? Well, you're the boss. Dealer, a ten-cent chip on the black and another one on the red. What? Okay, lady. One on the right, one on the black. <laughs> That's a new way to play roulette. Well, have fun, darling. I've got to get to Boulder Dam. See you later. And double O. But, dealer, you're taking my chips. Double O, you're a loser, lady. Oh. I'll explain it, madam. I'm the manager. Won't you step into my office? Oh, really? It isn't that important, you oh, know. Oh, yes, it is. Well, my name's Corrigan. Uh, how do you do? You were playing black and red at the same time. Is that some system? Well, is that illegal in Nevada? Oh, no. We, we love people with systems, but uh, people with cameras, we uh, we wonder about them. Uh, particularly expensive cameras, like the one in your handbag. Well, I don't see anything wrong. Well, uh, I've got a funny feeling about people sneaking pictures of my patrons, and that's what you were doing before. Could so easily turn into blackmail, uh, Hadn't that occurred to you? It so happens I'm a tourist. I like to take pictures. Oh, no, no, me. Uh, I like to take tourists. But strictly on the up and up, without any camouflage. All right. I used to work for a magazine. You probably won't like the idea, but I thought that I'd work up a feature they'd buy. Candid shots of this uh, sink of iniquity. Oh, 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 well, why didn't you say so? I like that idea fine. Uh, just be sure you spell our name right, Miss... Uh... Mrs. Booth. Oh, my apologies, Mrs. Booth. You don't know too much about gambling, do you? No, but I learn fast. Well, just for the record, we don't force people to gamble here. And you can't win betting both black and red. Here's a stack of $5 chips. You play with them. Oh, thanks, but I couldn't Oh, possibly... don't worry. They're house chips. They aren't worth anything. You don't lose, you don't win. You're making me feel like a real conspirator. <laughs> the professional word is shill, Mrs. Booth. Oh, this is very kind of you, Mr. Corrigan. I'll take the chips. Oh, uh, if you're uh, here for the cure, maybe you and I can get together for dinner. If I'm here for what? The cure, you know, six weeks in the Nevada sunshine, and you rid yourself of whatever ails you. Lumbago, matrimony, the common cold. <laughs> Your kindness <laughs> overwhelms me. Well, good. How about this evening? I'm afraid not, thank you. My husband hates to eat alone. Oh. Mr. Corrigan, do you mind if I use your telephone? Oh, here it is. It's yours. Thank you. Operator, I want to call Chicago, Elmwood, 06321. Miss Ruth Phillips, person to person. Corrigan, suave, sophisticated Corrigan. Dice roulette, 14's the lucky number. Lucky, that's me, lucky. Here we are, number 14. Lucky 14. Blackjack, hit me, dealer, hit me with a hot one. Poker, three of a kind, full house, four races, winning, winning, winning. I have David $600. Why shouldn't I be lucky with our own money? Why not? Why not? David, what would you say if I told you I won $1,200 this afternoon? Hmm? <laughs> Just let's dance. Huh? So help me. I'm telling the <laughs> truth. I've never been so lucky in my life. It was positively fabulous. People trailed me to whatever table I was playing, and they bet right with me and got rich. Well, you should never have had that drink. <laughs> I'm serious. You are? All right. Where's the 1200 Well, it was like this. I, I won 1200 but in reality, I broke even. Uh, darling, you need fresh air badly. All right, Mr. Weisenheimer. I'll break it down to you in simple detail. I was playing with house chips. Mr. Corrigan, the manager, let me have them. I really won all that money. You now, I believe you're telling me the truth. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of this. You know, it's a good thing we're leaving here before you really get spoiled. When are we going home? Tomorrow afternoon sometime. Let's leave now, this minute. 
the matter with you? We're not in that much of a hurry. Oh, please listen to me. Premonition? Uh, yes. Oh, now, stop being ridiculous. <laughs> Look, honey, I'm going to our room to finish my notes. There are a hundred things you can do. There's a floor show, a movie in town. All by myself? Well, here's the casino. I'll see you later, honey. Oh, David, I... Oh, welcome, Mrs. Booth. Uh, good evening, Mr. Corrigan. You want some house chips? Uh, no, thank you. Hey, what's wrong with you? You're staring at me as if I were your worst enemy. I'm going to take you tonight. Dealer, $50 stack. Bet 10 against the house. Got it. Coming out. D-11, you lose Lady Peter von Lund. Come on, Mrs. Booth. Let's go out of here and go out on the terrace and talk it over. Huh? You can control me, but those dice are liable to get out of hand. Yeah, coming out, make your best. Please. Bet 20 against the house. Well, I guess you're the doctor, Mrs. Booth. So long. Oh, craps. Natural seven, you lose Lady Pay de Fontland. Come in. Mr. Corrigan. Don't you ever go to sleep? It's 3 a.m. Say, a little rest wouldn't hurt you. I, I've seen you looking better. I need $100 till tomorrow. Uh-oh. It was nice and restful out in the terrace. My husband will write you a check first thing in the morning. Unless What? I... Win it back? How much did you drop? $600. Oh, not so good. And it wasn't even mine. It was expense money from the paper for this trip. <laughs> not so bad. Think how much worse you'd feel if it had been your own. Please, Mr. Corrigan, would you let me have the money? Look, why don't you wait till morning? You'll be fresher. You'll have a no, better I, chance. No, I can't. I but can't. afraid of what David will say? He'll understand. He? I, I don't even understand myself. I stood there watching it happen, swearing I would stop when I lost $100. But I didn't. I kept reaching into the envelope again and again. It was like seeing myself on a screen or in a dream, like, like, like watching a person who couldn't see or hear me. How, how could David understand that? I understand it. I've seen it happen before. Go to bed, Mrs. Booth. If you have to have bad dreams, have them there. They do less damage. You won't lend me the money? What for? Why throw away another hundred? Fifty, then. Just let me have fifty. I'll pay you back. No, no, you won't. Take the word of an expert. Twenty-five. Go to bed, Mrs. Booth. Twenty-five. You've got to give me a chance. Stop making me feel like a heel. I won't lend you a dime. If you need money that bad, I'll give you fifty. Only it's not a loan. It's a gift. No, thank you, Mr. Corrigan. I'll manage without you. How much will you let me have for this camera? I'm sorry, miss. You're a pawnbroker, aren't you? This is a Zultan camera and it's worth over $300. Do yourself a favor. Take the camera home. I can't. I, I've got to get some money. Give me a hundred. In the morning, everything will look different. You'll see. You're a nice young woman. I've got a daughter your Why age. Why do you keep jabbering at me? It's a perfectly simple thing. I bring in a camera and I want to borrow some money on it. A hundred dollars, fifty dollars, I don't care. I didn't steal the camera. I've got a right to pawn it if I want to. I'll sell it or throw it away. Only I've got to get some money before tomorrow morning. All right. All right. Here's a hundred and a ticket. Thank you. Thank you very much. Don't thank me. When you get the camera back, it'll be enough time to thank me. What makes you think I won't be back? My luck's got to change. Lady, on that shelf, look closely. Look. There must be at least 30 more cameras, just like yours. Our drama will continue in just a moment. But first, here's a word from RCA Victor. Suppose for a moment that Shakespeare, Beethoven, and Michelangelo could get together right now and produce combination works of entertainment. That will give you an idea of what actually happens when RCA Victor produces combination instruments of entertainment. For RCA Victor is at once the Shakespeare of radio, the Beethoven of recorded music, and the Michelangelo of television. No words can describe RCA Victor's combinations. To believe such masterpieces can exist, you'll have to visit your RCA Victor dealers and meet them in the flesh, or rather, in mahogany, walnut, or limed oak finish. 
They give you RCA Victor console radio, plus RCA Victor console phonograph, plus RCA Victor million-proof television, America's favorite television, all in one marvelous cabinet, and for far, far less than you'd pay for individual instruments of comparable quality. To feel like a tycoon of value and the Santa Claus of all time combined, take home your RCA Victor million-proof combination for Christmas. Here now is Act Two of the Screen Director's Playhouse production of Lady Gambles, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Joan and Stephen McNally as Corrigan. Six hundred dollars. I've lost David six hundred dollars. I gotta get it back. That fifty dealer with the dice. I'm scared. I gotta win. Oh, craps. Bet this fifty dealer with the dice. I'm trapped. Trapped like a frog in the bottom of a well, like a fly in a cork bottle. Ah, seven, the winner. My luck's changed. Bet the hundred, bet the two, four. I've got it back every dollar. I'll never go near you again. I'm free. I'm free. Where am I? Johnny. Yes, David. Coming toward us. Isn't that your sister, Ruth? Why, uh, why, yes. Why didn't you tell me you asked her to come? Oh, I didn't, David. I swear I didn't. Uh, Oh, I I did phone her, but only to say hello and ask how she was. After we agreed not to... I had to, David. You don't know what it's like, darling, being in the middle like this. You on one side and Ruth on the other. I'm always doing something wrong to one of you. Ruth! Ruth, we're over here! Joe, now let me look at you. How are you? You look a little pale. I'm fine. Oh, Ruth, you have a good trip? I guess so. You're looking well, David. Your vacation seems to have done you good. Do you mind if we look at the gambling room? I've never seen one. Oh, sure, a little while. We've got to get back to the room and pack. Pack? Are you leaving? Uh, this afternoon. Oh. Uh, Ruth, I wish we now, could... Now, don't st- worry about me, dear. I'm used to looking out for myself. David, do you think maybe we might stay over? No, Joan, uh, I've got to get back to oh, the paper. Oh, just for another day or so, couldn't we? No, Joan, no. Oh, please, David, you know Ruth. Within an hour after we'd left, she'd be miserable and... Why? I'm sure there must be other single women here. And you know how quickly I can make friends. Well, sure she can. Oh, David, I, I'm going to my room. Now, Joan. 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 It's all right, Joan. All right. I- I'm sorry, David. You want to stay on here with her, don't you? Well, couldn't you stay, too, just for a day or now, so? Joan, Joan, I can't. But you can. Thanks. Well, you better hurry and tell Ruth the... The good news. Mr. Corrigan believes I'm his lucky charm. He offered me 20% of the profits if I'd play poker for him. But I won't. Ruth, let's leave here. Let's... Oh, Joan, darling, this place is wonderful for you. Why are David and tell him you'll be back in a week or so. Oh, now, Ruth, Mr. Corrigan couldn't have possibly have affected you that rapidly. What if I did only meet him tonight? I like him very much. And he liked me. Oh, Ruth. Now, don't owe Ruth me. Heaven knows you've got no need to be jealous. You've got David. Oh, cut it out, Ruth, will you? You can't stand it, can you, if a man shows the slightest interest in me? Can you? Shall I tell you some of the things he said to me while we were dancing? No, please. He said I danced beautifully. He refused to believe that I was eight years older than you and that I raised you from a baby because Mother died when you were born. Oh, stop it, Ruth, stop it. He, he isn't your kind. I, I just don't want you to get hurt again. What makes you so sure I'll get hurt? Maybe he does find me attractive. Is that so impossible? Is it? I didn't say that. Just because I never got married? You think I didn't have any chances? What about Joe Matthews? He was dying to marry me, and I was only 18. I know, Ruth, I know. I I had you on my hands, skinny little brat. If I'd had any sense, I'd have done what Joe said, put you into a home somewhere. Please, darling, please. Maybe then I wouldn't have to stand here like a fool and be laughed at by my own sister. Uh, You... you slapped me. Yes, and I'll do it again. Laughing at me because I turned into a dried-up old maid that nobody wants. Ruth, I'm going out. Where are you going? I don't know, I... I haven't quite made up my mind. Uh, 
Well, you're a great little poker player, John. Anytime you want to work at full time, let me know. Yes, the cards did seem to come my way, didn't they? Yeah. Tired? Mm Mm-hmm. A little, but nice tired. Here's your cut. You came out nearly four grand ahead. We'll make it an even 800. Say, that's not a bad night's work. Care for a drink? (laughs) At a quarter of six in the morning? What kind of a girl do you think I am? Why don't you stop sparring with me, John? I haven't been sparring. You're nicer like this. Look at you now. Easy, relaxed. Tired, but like you said, nice tired. Your office is a pleasant room in the morning. It's a lot more than that. It's what's in the room. The game, the fight, the fear. And the peace that comes when you lick that fear. When you win. No, even when you lose. It, it's different, but... Well, there's a kind of peace in that, too. Like, like when you were a kid and you took your punishment and you knew that it was over. I never thought of that. You may be right, though. I'm right, all right. I'm right about a lot of things. I know you, Joan. I know what you need. You'll get them with me. I'm right for you, and you're right for me. Joan. No, no, please. I, I, I think I'd better go. Oh, Joan, listen to me. That This is where you belong. Yes. I, no, no, Corrigan. It's, it, it's no good. It's my fault. I, I'm i sorry. I, I really am. Yeah. Well, okay, Joan. Skip it, uh, how about that drink later, like like this afternoon? If you like. I like. It's a date, then? It's a date. Ruth, Ruth, talk to me. Please talk to me. I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, don't cry. Please don't cry. I'll do anything. I can't bear sitting in this room hurting you. Roulette. Yes, that's it, roulette. Number 14, lucky 14. Forget your troubles. Forget troubles. Oh, David. David's back. Let's go out on the terrace. Yes, of course. Oh, it's been rotten here without you, dear. Yeah, those weren't house chips you were playing with. Oh, I did an awful thing, David. I, I wanted to try my luck just once. With, with real money, I mean. I, I just had to get it out of my system. If only I'd known you were coming. Why do you think I came? Hmm? Why do you think I turned the car around and headed it back? Because you couldn't bear it without me. Say it. That's why. It is, isn't it? Yes. Well, hello. Welcome. Hello, Mr. Corrigan. Well, so you're back with us, Mr. Booth. Huh? Quick trip. We missed him, didn't we, Mrs. Booth? Yes. Funny thing, the way husbands come and go around here. Only usually one goes and another one comes back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, would you excuse us if uh, we... We uh... were just going for a drive out to Boulder Dam. Well, maybe you'll like it. Uh, do you like concrete? They got a big hug of it out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. She'll like it. Uh, she, she's crazy for concrete. Uh, we both are. I've wanted to go out ever since I got here. Well, uh, we've been busy. Have a good time. <laughs> nice Clean cut boy. Now, a fella told me there's never been a single suicide off the dam here. Yet back in Chicago, they drop off high buildings like flies. What's the matter, David? Fella could spit nearly half a mile down there. It's quite a feeling. What's a roulette wheel got can compare with that? What do you mean, darling? What is all this with the casino? All night last night and the night before? Most of the days, too? Oh, nothing, David. It's nothing. Just lack of something better to do. Well, spitting half a mile is better. Lying in the sun is better. So is a two-inch steak. Last week, you'd have thought so, too. Well, I think so now. Darling, are you worried about me? A little? Yes. Well, don't be. The casino was exciting, of course, but... Let's face it, I'm just a little hick from Chicago and I found a brand new shiny toy. Joan, it's the deep end for people with no talent for living. They're not big enough to take the plunge here. So they, they, they do it in the gambling joints. That's your brand new shiny toy. Well, it's not new anymore and it's not shiny. I can take it or leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. And if I ever go near one of those joints again, you can take away my two-inch stakes for a solid year. Scout's honor. Oh, Joan. Say, you know what? I'm going to phone the boss. Tell him I'm taking the week off and we'll have ourselves a real holiday. How about Lake Mead? Oh, wonderful. It's beautiful. We won't have to travel too far. It's only across the state oh, line. 
David. Huh? Uh, Ruth. Now, I know you're going to object. No, 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 I'm not. You don't mind if she comes along? Not in the least. Oh, thanks, David, thanks. <laughs> don't thank me, thank Ruth. Oh, I don't get you. Ruth's gone. She left for Chicago this afternoon. Oh, that's my fault. I shouldn't have left her alone. What's the matter? Isn't she old enough to look after her own affairs? I should have phoned her. That's the least I could have done. Oh, forget it. We had a silly argument. I I didn't mean to hurt her, David. Honest, I didn't. Come here, come here. Come here, Joan. Oh, please. Look up at me now. Remember me? I'm the fellow you married. David, I... Darling. Darling, I love you. I I love you, too. Oh... I really don't deserve you, but if you'll just be patient with me... Lady, lady, you know that you talk too much? Hmm. That's much better than talking. Much. Call me in, Davy. All right, hang on. Oh, boy, this Lake Mead water is cold. All right, up. Here you go, swim. There. Oh, off comes the swim cap. Aren't I a sight? Hey, I thought you went to Las Vegas yesterday to have that hair curl. Oh, uh, uh, well, Marie was out sick, so I I just skipped it. Ding, ding, ding. Time for lunch. Time for lunch. Oh, uh, didn't I tell you, David, that... uh, that Mrs. Henniger, the one we met night before last, why, uh, she, uh, she asked me to lunch today. Okay, off to Las Vegas you go. Uh, David, Mrs. Henniger. Oh, don't tell me you're meeting her at the Pelican again. Yes, darling. Well, I'm going to take you both to lunch. Ah, oh, no, not today. She wants to have a real heart-to-heart talk about her divorce. You know, girl talk. Mr. Corrigan. Oh, looking for someone, Mr. Booth? Yes, my wife. I expected her for dinner. Well, late, isn't she? It's 3 a.m. You know where she is? Uh, not exactly. You know how they are. She's gone table crawling. It's a, it's a change of luck. What do you mean, how they are? The gamblers. The ones who've got it bad, like your wife. When last seen, she was headed for the blue chip. <laughs> John, what are you doing here, sitting in this deserted parking lot? I... I don't know. How, um... How's lunch with Mrs. Henniger? Oh, deadly. She talked and talked and talked. All through the poker session? What? You were playing poker all afternoon, weren't you? I won a young fortune, David. What about the money you won yesterday when you were supposed to be at the beauty parlor? The day before when you wanted to go shopping by yourself? Oh, don't be angry, David, please. It was... Well, it was just that... When you came back, I felt so lucky, I'll and never I... play again, you said. Scout's honor. You were through with these places, you said. I didn't want to come here. Well, then why? I don't know. I don't know why. I was all keyed up. I, I thought I'd just watch a few minutes, and then something made me bet once, and I lost, and then again, and I lost, and before I knew it, I lost a lot, so I, I went across the street, and I kept on losing. You don't know what it's like, David... It's like being whipped and kicked and then stepped on when you're down and all the time you... All right, Joan, Joan, it's all over now. I'm scared, David, scared. Something's happened to me and I don't know what it is. It grabs hold of me and I can't shake it off. I see it happening, but I can't stop it. Help me, David, take me away from here. Help me, darling, please. When we ask you to try Anison for the relief of pain due to a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, we are not asking you to try a new or unproved method. For there are many people listening in now who have been introduced to Anison tablets by their own dentist or physician. You who have received Anison this way know the effective, incredibly fast relief these tablets bring. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one 
but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. People by the thousands are using modern anison today instead of other ways. Doesn't their experience seem worth following? Try anison the next time you suffer pains from headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. You will be delighted with the results. Ask your druggist for anison today. Anison is spelled A N A C I N. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature of NBC's All Star Festival. The third act of Lady Gambles will continue after a brief pause for station identification. Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Lady Gambles, starring Barbara Stanwyck as Joan and Stephen McNally as Corrigan. It's three months now, Las Vegas. If I never see you again... Oh, David, I love you. I love the seashore here at San Crispin. Only it's... It's lonely. No excitement. Come, you seven. No, no. Two-inch stakes, exercise, fresh air. David, time to fish again. David, I've hooked a big one, a ten-pounder. David, how much longer will it take? Hmm? Will what take? Uh, finishing writing your book. Oh. oh. Two or three months, if our money holds out. Oh, so soon? <laughs> Fine thing. I slave all day over a hot typewriter and look at the thanks I get. Oh, well, that will mean leaving here, won't it? Oh, no, not a chance. If the book goes over, we'll buy this cottage. If it doesn't, we'll stay here and raise vegetables and about ten kids. <laughs> will you settle for five? Lean over and kiss me, sweetheart. On your mark. Mm. Winner and still champion. David. What's the matter? Don't you think you ought to get started? Huh? Well, you've got a long way to go. Oh, San Diego. Gee, I'd forgotten all about it. Did you, darling? Oh, you say the sweetest oh, things. Cut it out, Johnny. I've got to go. Now, you sure you don't want to come along? I'm sure I do. Wonderful. But I won't. You're going to the library to work, and I'd only be in your way. Bless your little heart. Well, you better get going. Where's your bag? It's right here by the door. It's all packed. Do you have everything you need? Yep. Driver's license, yep. identification? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, holy smoke. Well, what are you going... What are you, what's he up to? Thank goodness one member of the family has some brains. Why, what did you forget? Nothing very important. Uh, I forgot to take some money out of a tin box, and I was just going to walk out without a dime in my pocket, that's all. Oh. Did you lock it good, David? Well, there's 1100 bucks in there. What do you think? You won't forget to drive carefully, will you, darling? I will, Joni. Any more last-minute instructions before I get into the car? Well, no. Oh, stop looking like that, Joni. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> David, I just got an idea. Why should I stay home alone? Let me ride as far as town with you, and I, I can go to a picture show. <laughs> Hop in, idiot girl. One ticket, please. Uh, excuse me, miss. Aren't you Mrs. Booth? Yes. Ducky, you remember Mrs. Booth, don't you, from Las Vegas, the, the, the Pelican? The lucky lady? Well, I certainly do. Uh, how do you do? Now, don't give yourself a headache trying to remember our names. We're the Sutherlands. Oh, yes, of course. How are you enjoying your visit? Fine, fine. For Dennis, Mexico's no different than anywhere else. Just so long as he can smell out some place to gamble. Of course, here he's already found a place, even if it is illegal. Yeah, it's not much of a place for that one broken-down crap table, is it, Mrs. Booth? Well, to tell the truth, I don't know anything about it. You mean you haven't even been there? Oh, I'm afraid I can't afford it these days. Well, we'll fix that. Come on along. It's only two doors away. 
You provide the luck and I'll provide the money. Uh, no, no, thanks. I don't think I'd better. Oh, come on now. You can't let me down. The biggest streak I ever had was riding with you in Las Vegas. No, really, I, I'd rather not. Oh, talk to her, Ducky. Tell her how hurt we'll be if she doesn't come with us. There'll be no living with him if you don't. Please. What do you say? Well, I, I'm not really dressed. Now, dice don't care how you dress. Will it be all right if I don't play, if I just watch? <laughs> Certainly. There we are. And here's the crap table, Mrs. Booth. Oh, I see. Next gunner coming out. I'll take the dice dealer. Bet a hundred. Come on, Mrs. Booth. Roll them for me. Just once. All right. Give them to me. It's seven. The winner pay the line. Got the 200 ride. Do it again, Mrs. Booth. Here we go. The 11, the ladies in that one. Ha, ha. Oh, you're my lucky charm, Mrs. Booth. We'll break the house. Throw this one for Papa, Mrs. Booth. And seven, the winner. Mr. Sutherland, do you have a car? Yes, a black Cadillac across the street. Do you mind if I borrow it? Of course not. Why don't you do it later? Come on, roll the dice. Sure, later. When I come back with my own money. I'm not interested in percentages. What's wrong with her, darling? Did you see the look in her eye? Over here, Joan. Yes. The money? Yes. All of it, Joan. All of it? You didn't gamble it away, did you, Joan? Nothing. Tell me I'm wrong, that you did something else with it, anything. No. What else could it be? One short night, a few miserable hours. What else could swallow up a couple of lives so quickly, so completely, you and me? The book, this place, the kids. Do you know the answer? I ought to know, but I don't. Say something, John, say something. Ah, what's the use? We've got $180 left. Here, here's half. It's not much, but it'll get me back to Chicago. The book? Well, it'll have to wait for a bit. What you do with your half is something I can't decide for you. But if it brings you back home, I'll be there. Well, look who's here. <laughs> can't resist me, can you, Joan? May I come in, Mr. Corrigan? Ask a foolish question, you're liable to get a foolish answer. Say, what are you doing in Vegas? Staying a while or just passing through? That depends. On what? On you, I'm afraid. Oh, that's bad. I'm the, not the dependable type. You said once if I ever wanted full-time work to come around. Well, I, I've come around. Oh, I see. What's with you and... Uh... We separated. Uh, it figures. Didn't he leave you with any cash? The other way around. I didn't leave him with any. Oh, you found a wheel, huh? A table. So I could really use a job right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have a seat. Thanks. Yeah. You know, the only trouble is, it looks like, though, I'm, I'm going to be pulling out of Vegas in a week or so. There, there really isn't much I could do for you You're around here. leaving? Yeah, I got a little project of my own on the fire. Oh, that's too bad. I mean, it's fine for you. I, I wish you luck. Well, I'll be Wait safe. a minute, wait, wait a minute, Maria. You've got class. It's crazy, but am I just... It's a brainstorm, Joan, but I think maybe you got yourself a job. Doing what? Well, a few of the boys and myself have gotten together a little syndicate. Here's the deal. We're taking over a racing stable, but we couldn't move until we got a front. You're the front. You're about to become the owner of a string of horses. But I don't know anything about horse oh, racing. Well, don't look so scared. This is strictly a legitimate enterprise. No fixed races, no doping, no, no dirty work at all. What we do is take a filly-like happy girl who hasn't shown a thing in the last six outings, sharpen her up on a private track, then, when the odds are right, drop her into a cinchero spot and get paid off in bucketfuls. Interested? Oh, it's a lifesaver, Corrigan. Thanks. But there's one thing you ought to know before you decide. That money I lost wasn't mine. David had saved it nickel by nickel, $1,100. As soon as I can scrape that much together, I'm going to take it back to him. How do you figure to scrape it together? Saving it, nickel by nickel, or gambling? Any way I can. <laughs> Fine. I don't think you'll be walking out on us too soon. 
Come here, John. Corrigan, I... Oh, John, don't play coy. I'm not playing coy. I'm just not playing, that's all. Uh, Something about me, I've got patience. Plenty of patience. Ladies and gentlemen, America's newest car, the fine new Ford for 1951, is now on display at your neighborhood Ford dealers. And when you see it, you'll find that inside and out, in every detail of design and construction, the 1951 Ford reflects true fine car quality. And in addition, it offers 43 look-ahead features designed to keep the 51 Ford young in appearance and young in performance. For example, there's Ford's smart luxury lounge interiors with their exclusive color-harmonized Ford Craft fabrics. There's the new automatic ride control that automatically adjusts spring reaction to the type of road to give you a level ride, an easy ride. And there's the automatic mileage maker that lets you get the last mile out of every gallon of gasoline for utmost economy. Visit your Ford dealer soon and see the 1951 Ford yourself. You'll agree. You can pay more. But you can't buy better. Now back to our story. Lady Gambles, starring Barbara Stanwyck and Stephen McNally. Happy girl. Oh, soon, soon. I love you, Davy. I'll be home with your 1100 soon. Hollywood Park. Corrigan, I need some more money. Why? You just had a winner, didn't you? Say, let me see your ticket. Number five? Are you out of your head? I told you seven was going to win the race. I know, but I had a terrific What goes hunch. with you, Joan? Do you like to lose? I've got to have $1,100. Anyway, what fun is it betting on a sure thing and giving the track odds? Look, if you're looking for bargains, go to a department store. Don't come to a track unless you want to get hurt. I wish you'd stop saying that. It shouldn't bother you unless it's true. What are you trying to do? Punish yourself? Raise 20, Chuck. Say, how long has this syndicate been together now? About three months, Corrigan. Uh, what are we waiting for with Happy Girl? One of these days, she'll bust loose and win before we're ready. Then where are we? Okay, okay. You think we'll run at the time trial for tomorrow? You shoot those one tent. Hold it, Chuck. It's, it's only John. Hi, lady. How's the weather out? Clear. Track is fast. Good evening, gentlemen. Hello. No one's going to ask you to play, so we're not dust. Isn't my money any good, Chuck? Poker and women don't mix. Well, we're on the subject of mixing. How about throwing together some drinks for us? Deal me in and I will. There's a, there's a dice game over the Eversham, John. Why, why don't you give it a whirl? I huh? just did. Isn't my money any good? Now, leave every cent over a dime she's got on her. Come on with me, John. Where to? The door. Here, take this dough. And try to make it last, will you? James is beginning to get on my nerves. They have a lush around any time. At least the lush will pass out once in a while. Happy girl did it in 110. 110, Corrigan, breezing. Saturday, Corrigan? Sure, why not? How about it, Chuck? Yeah. Now, this is how we're going to operate. We make no bets till 20 minutes before post time. None. And no bets with any of the local books. And nobody goes to the track, get it? Nobody goes to the track. Is it clear? The odds will come in around 30 to 1. If we play it smart, they stay there. And let's begin by playing it smart. Let's get out of here before somebody sees us. You go with the boys, Chuck. I'll take Joan back to the hotel. Okay. Joan, here's a letter for you. I've been following you all over the country. Thanks. Hey, it looks official. It is. It's, it's from David. <laughs> Why, does he decide that he doesn't like playing husband anymore? That isn't the way I read it. 
He sent a paper along for me to sign in, in case I want a divorce. So long, Corrigan. Hey. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Where are you going? What difference does it make? Uh, please, uh, could I have $10 worth of quarters? I want to make a long-distance call. Thanks. Would you mind turning your radio on? KGM are the races. <laughs> Operator, I want to call Chicago, please. City room of the Morning Herald, David Booth. How much? The horses are at the post now. The flag is up. And there they go. And it's happy girl. Yes, operator. Followed closely around the turn by the pack. Hello, and David. It's Joan. Never third yes, old, just yesterday. The well, that's why I called you. It's been following me around, and I, I couldn't let you think I'd just ignored it. Well, no, not yet, but I will if that's what you never want. Never I'll sign the paper today. Oh, no, David, it isn't what I want, but I... Oh, darling, neither do I. What? No, no, you mustn't. I... Well, I can't come home, David, not yet. Oh, no, darling, it isn't because I don't want... Come on, And here he comes on the outside, crossing the finish I've got to hang up now, darling. girl by a lent Shelby second pick-me-up. Jack Corrigan, Tony, happy girl. Happy girl won. Not that 30 to 1, John. Where were you last night? Where were you all today? I'll tell you where she was. Happy girl closed at 8 to 5. Does that mean anything to you, sweetheart? Uh, I don't understand. I'll draw you a picture. Someone went to the track and bet a couple of C's on happy girl. But someone was you. Did you, Joan? Answer. Some wise guy saw the owner of happy girl bet the two C's on a 30 to 1 shot. So they got on and so did the rest of the smart money. Happy girl was the hottest tip of the year. Went 8 to 5, sweetheart. Give me your bag. No, I... Here, Corrigan. $200 tickets on Happy Girl to win, you dirty little... Uh... I'll cut your heart out. Take it easy, Chuck. I'll handle this. Get out of my way, Corrigan. Stay right where you're at. I'll blow your head off. Come on, Joe. We'd better take a little trip. I haven't said a word since we left Chuck. What's there to say? I, I don't know what got into me. I must have been out of my mind. Ah, skip it. It's finished. No man ever hit me before. I feel sick, ashamed. What are we stopping for? Highway 66. This is the end of the line. So long, John. But I thought... What did you think? I'd really like to know. Oh, please, Corrigan. I... I'll tell you what I think. You're a lost cause, baby. And that's, that's one thing a guy in my business can't afford. It took a long time for it to sick, think into my thick skull. But today was a big day all around. So this is the kiss-off. But, but where can I go? Anywhere you like. It's a big country. Goodbye. Okay. Mind your manners, honey. The man said goodbye. Goodbye, Corrigan. Memphis, Dallas, St. Louis, San Francisco, Seattle, New Orleans. I gotta have money. Oh, it's no use. Miami, New York, Kansas City. Model, waitress, clerk, taxi dancer. Keep away from me, you... Come on, you seven. Broke. Broke. Mister, can you spare a five? Ah, oh, Frenchie, loaded dice. Kiss him for me, baby. Kiss him for me. Kick a brain set, Maxie. Kick a brain set. Fella told me there's never been a single suicide off Boulder Dam. In Chicago, they drop off high buildings Chicago. like flies. Chicago, where am I? I'm in a hospital. My face, my my head. How low can I go? Oh, 
Joan, darling, darling, Joan. What did they do to you? Well, take it easy, Miss Phillips. She can't hear you. Doctor, is she... She's going to be all right, isn't she? Sure. Right now, it's shock more than anything else. Why are you here, David? Why did they call you? They must have thought she was my wife. Your wife? Look at her, lying there half dead. Aren't you satisfied yet? Why don't you go away? That'd make you real happy, wouldn't it? What more do you want? Wrecking my life wasn't enough for you, was it? Now, wait. You had to smash hers and then kick her out, leave her without a cent. To starve for all you knew I cared. Haven't you done enough? Well, I've got her back now. Back with me where she belongs. Finally. Yes, finally. You'll never get your hands on her again. I'll see to that. This is what you've always wanted, isn't it? Yes, if you must know. I always knew this is the way it'd end up. On the very first day I saw you. And you worked for it, didn't you? Day and night you worked for it. Not hard enough. Not nearly hard enough. Don't, David. Oh, jo Joni, Joni. Don't make her talk like that. Oh, Joan, darling, my sweet baby. Don't listen to him. To the things he said. He's trying to come between us again. But you won't let him, will you, Joan? Will you, darling? Will you? Stop it, Ruth. She's sick. She's Joan, sick. Joan, you know everything I ever did. All I ever thought about was for you. You know that, don't you, darling? Please, please. Say it, darling. Let him hear it. Send him away once and for all after what he did to you. Tell him, Joan. Doc, will you get her out of here? No, not yet. Why don't you answer me, Joan? Tell him, darling. Tell him how much I've done for you. David. Okay, Ruth, that's enough now. Take your hands off me. Why did you call him? To start the whole thing over again? To let him kick you into the gutter again? Well, I won't let you, do you hear? I won't let you. You'll have to kill me. Ruth, first. please. Yes, you kill me the way you've always done, from the day you were born, the way you killed your own mother. It's enough, you idiot. Get out. Can't you see she's sick? Let her alone, David. It's through. It's true. I did kill her. I did. I know. No, 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 darling. I've darling, you didn't know. It. Before I could even talk, I remember hearing them say it. Everything I ever touched, I destroyed everyone. My mother, Ruth, David. But no more. I won't destroy any more. No, of course you won't. All right, David. Miss Phillips, outside, both of you. She's had about as much as she can take for now. Okay. Joan. Let's get going. Hey, Joan. Joan, she's gone through the window. She's out the ledge. Take it easy, Ruth. What are you trying to do? Make her jump for sure? Joan! Come back, Joan. Leave me alone. I want to die. Booth, get out on the ledge. Approach her with care. Yeah, okay. Don't come near me. Joan. Joan, please. Don't come near me, I said. Hold it, Booth. Joan? Why don't you go ahead and jump? Kill yourself. That's what you've always wanted, isn't it? You and Ruth? The big punishment? Your mother died giving life to you, so now you die and give that life back. That's the only way to even the score, isn't it? Ask Ruth. She'll tell you. You've been telling her that for years. Listen to reason, darling. Listen to reason. Go ahead, Joan. Destroy yourself. Ruth's waiting. Here. Take my hand. Johnny. Well, reach out to me now. Come back. No, no, don't, don't look down. Don't give me your hand, Johnny. <laughs> All right, pass her over to me. All right, yeah. <laughs> ah. Back to bed you go, young lady. Joan, Joan, it's not true, Joan. It's not true what the doctor said. You know that, darling, don't you? Go away, Ruth. Please go away. Joan. You heard what she said. Now give her a break and get going. We can have a happy life again if you leave her alone. I won't have it. I won't have it. Come on. I'm taking you home, Joni. I'm taking you home with me. I'm free, Davy. I'm free. There'll be no more detour, darling. No more dead ends. You'll never have to worry again. Never. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara Stanwyck and Stephen McNally. Our stars of Lady Gambles will return in just a moment with our guest director, Michael Gordon.
But now, here's... Here's... And now, here's being Baggy Pants Crosby. Oh, yeah. Well, now, Ken, that type of introduction's entirely uncalled for. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Bing, but your clothes are a little rumpled tonight. A little rumpled. Yeah. Well, I can tell you why. I had a very rough train trip up from Los Angeles. Yeah. I, I had a horrible experience. I shared an upper berth with Bob Hope. <laughs> That's the last time I ever get stuck in a berth with groaning Lisa. So why did you have to have Hope in the berth with you? He broke out of his crate. <laughs> Let's move along to uh, something musical, huh? Chesterfield, Chesterfield, always wins first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell. Then you'll smoke them. Don't forget to give Crosby for Christmas. Yes, give Chesterfield Christmas cartons with Bing as Papa Santa Claus. Next week, the Screen Director's Playhouse again holds its annual Christmas party. And that means the studio will be filled with... We'll see the broadcast of a Christmas play. Our story will be the heartwarming Miracle on 34th Street, directed by George Seaton. And our star, recreating his original unforgettable role, will be Edmund Gwynn. And now, here again are tonight's stars, Barbara Stanwyck and Stephen McNally. Steve, this is the chance we've been waiting for. It certainly is, Barbara. I think you'd better explain to the audience. Well, it's as simple as this. When people like Steve, Nally, and myself do a picture, it's all us up there on the screen, and I I guess the audience just forgets that there's a man who shows us what to do and how to do it. And he's the screen director. And this is our chance to introduce him to you. So, ladies and gentlemen, meet the director of Lady Gambles. And of such other pictures as uh, Cyrano de Bergerac, The Woman in Hiding. Mr. Michael Gordon. Thank you. You know, Barbara, Steve, this is the first time all three of us have been together since we did the picture. And what an experience that was. Eh? I think it had an impact on all our lives. You mean the simple fact of studying a psychopathic gambler? That's it. You know, it scared me. I gave up gin rummy. I dropped canasta. <laughs> I took one look at the preview and called in all the kids on my block. Oh, what, to teach them a lesson? No, to give them their marbles back. There speaks the director. <laughs> and if the director may add a serious word, doing the picture was a very great pleasure on a couple of counts. First, we tried to be honest and to treat the subject with an informed fidelity. And second, working with you, Steve, and Barbara. Well, ladies and gentlemen, all I can say is that when the picture was finished, the crew didn't want to go home. Oh, Mike, that's because you had all their marbles. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. And so ends tonight's Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by Chesterfield, the only cigarette that combines mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste, RCA Victor... World leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and your local Ford dealer, who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford, the car that's built for the years ahead. The Lady Gambles was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, who will soon release Harvey, starring Jimmy Stewart. Barbara Stanwyck can currently be seen in Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's production To Please a Lady. Stephen McNally can soon be seen on the screen in Air Cadet, a Universal International Picture co-starring Gail Russell and Richard Long. Michael Gordon has just completed I Can Get It For You Wholesale for 20th Century Fox, where he is now under exclusive contract. Included in tonight's cast were Tony Barrett, Bill Conrad, Georgia Backus, Byron Kane, Paul Avery, Ruth Parrott, and John Daner. Lady Gambles was adapted for radio by Jack Rubin. The Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next Thursday when we present Edmund Gwen in The Miracle on 34th Street. Our guest screen director will be George Seaton. <laughs> Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Join Duffy's Tavern tomorrow on NBC.